Like many Rastas, Bob Marley talks in a thick Jamaican patois, which at times is difficult to understand. He starts out talking about reggae music. Yeah, Jamaican people play it. Yeah, it's like musicians from Jamaica play that music, you know? And like musicians from, um, you might find a black musician from America play the funk or blues, you know? And people only play reggae music. Can it, can it be copied quite successfully outside of Jamaica? Well, you see, where I feel about the music, it can be copied, you know? But it's not copied to it. It's the feel. You know, it carry a feel where if you ask plenty musicians, them know it, but them can't do it. So people still searching for this truth here, which this reggae music, you know, bring cross to them. And the only, the only purpose it serves is to tell the people about Rastafari. Did you, did you always intend being just a reggae musician or had you played rock music and, and soul music before? In our sense, we really listen to a lot of music, you know? I mean, the first time, just to listen to music that play on the radio. Not that we couldn't afford to buy records, so we listen to the radio. And anything the radio play is that we hear. So I was really into them things. I was really into, like, you know, call it, spiritual music, you know, to it get more revolutionized, you know. How long have you been a Rasta? Well, I've been a Rasta from ever since, you know, but it's not how long I've been a Rasta, it's how long it takes to grow up, because what he is is what he is. From beginning to the end, you can never change because if you even adopt things later out, you and filter right out. So we're just Rasta from creation, you know. It's not an easy thing to explain in an educated standard of way. Still, you have people who can do it. But it's a common sense, man. That means when we explain things, we explain it in a very simple way. That means if I explain it to a baby, the baby will understand too, you know. So we were saying now, like the Bible, the Bible say, God same shall return as the king of kings, the lords of lords, the conqueror line of a tribe of Judah. And him shall come in a new name. And this new name shall be dreadful among the Eden. How important are the dreadlocks? This? Is that this part is my of being identity, a man. Yeah, this is my identity. Do you, do you have to have dreadlocks if you're a Rasta? But if he's a Rasta, then you wouldn't say, why you shouldn't have it? Because then you don't know freedom is freedom, and you don't have to bow, you do whatever you like. But it's not a thing to say, well, I would, I would like to be a Rasta, but I wouldn't like to have this. You dig? Mm. It can't be a thing like that. It has to be a fullness where you yourself know that it's God creator, and I don't want no life, no obligation. That means he's your own man. That's the first time you own yourself. You do what you want to do. Anything people want to say about you, you don't care because, you know what I mean? Even them who say it still have a comeback, you see them have to do the same. Perhaps the most controversial aspect of Rastafarianism is the use of marijuana as a central part of the philosophy. Officially named ganja, it's colloquially described by the Rastas as herb. And Bob Marley is said to smoke a pound a week. It's outlawed in Jamaica, and a convicted smoker can expect an 18-month jail sentence. The more you accept herbs, the more you accept Rastafari. You dig what I say? We who accept herb, herb is not, herb is important, but herb is more important to the people who don't accept it yet because that is a reality. I mean, it's not so well then, um, um, so well then something that you crave, but you check it in your sense and say, herb. Herb is a plant. I mean, herbs are good for everything. Why, why these people who want to do so much good for everyone, who call themselves governments and this and that, why them say you must not use the herb? 
you see? And we take that and we can't find, we just see them just say, no, you mustn't use it, you mustn't use it because it make you rebel. Against what? Against men who won't crave because them crave for the things like several and them have some material things and them want to captivate your mind and tell you, say, well, you have to work and put your pension and him keep it all. So herb make you look for yourself and instead of you want to work for the man, you want you want you want for you want to be one of the man to not in the sense of how him is, but in the sense of why should you have to bow to these things? Do you have to smoke to be a raster? No, man. But in this time, I mean, like, for instance, you're reaching a sense where you're, you're strong enough, you can take a look of smoke. So when all them car pass, although you live in the city, you don't hear it because you're thinking. Differently if you just live so. Then, you know what I mean, you, the whole world confuses you and you're worried and you don't have no time to think. And herb, herb is a thing that gives you a little time for yourself so you can live, mm. if you use it. What about alcohol? Alcohol makes you drunk, man. It don't make you meditate, it just makes you drunk. When you drink alcohol, you don't meditate. You're more giddy-headed. Herb is more a consciousness. It must create problems for you, though, when you go different parts of the world where perhaps it's outlawed, as it were. Well, it's just like what we're saying is that I don't care. This is the people who make it out law, like it's but a few. Majority of the people from the hurt want it. And it's just a few because guns and prisons and bad life treat you bad. So people kind of... But we want some people power. And the only people power is Rastafari. Essentially, Marley's a quiet man. A difficult man to reach because he's got no interest in the hype vibe which preoccupies so many rock stars. He upset many New Zealand journalists by refusing interviews. Not because of a sudden whim, but because really he isn't interested in that type of thing. Media. You see, if I run a newspaper, I would do a lot of interviews because what I wanted to say I would get it across. But when I talk to someone who have to go to someone and then I'm headed it for fit up their business and if it's too, if it's too militant, them try to spread that type of propaganda. I mean, the media, you know, the media, you know, media is a different game. Media is a media control. You were badly hurt once because of what seemed to be some sort of political type shooting in your home country, Jamaica. Do, 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 you, do you see dabbling in politics a good idea for someone in your position? Well, is it dabbling in politics? I don't know what that is. You see, stand up and talk for my rights. I know what that is. See? And I don't care who the guy is. Because my right is my right. Like, my life, you know, all I have is my life. That means if I can say, I don't want that or I don't want this. When I check it out, the biggest man was a baby one time. So I don't know where he get all of these big ideas want to be rulers over people. You see? And help enforce devilism. <laughs> Can't dig it. Can't take it. We're a rebel, man. <laughs> We're revolutionaries, you know? Is that the way you'd see yourself? Yeah, I see myself as a revolutionary. Who don't have no help and not take no bribe from no one to fight it single-handed with music. Rasta is the future. See? <laughs> yes.
Rasta is a beauty, Jessica. 